Friday Night Football kicks off one week from tonight. We'll check in with the reigning champions from each division. Plus, the changes this season to the Division I playoff format. How many teams get in and what's different about the championship game. And the annual New Hampshire Tackles Hunger Food Drive is now underway. How you can help high school football teams give back to their communities. It's all coming up in the Friday Night Football Kickoff Special. What's going on? Hunter Long, tight end with Miami Dolphins, former Exeter Blue Hawk. It's time for another season of Friday Night Football. And welcome to our Friday Night Football preseason kickoff special. We are ready to go for our 28th season of Friday Night Football. We've got a great show lined up for you tonight. I'm Mike Cronin. I know this is a different look from what you're used to seeing. We had to call an audible today because of the weather, so I'm here in studio. But we do have Jonathan Marshall standing by live at the annual Bo Dixon Queen City Jamboree at Gill Stadium in Manchester. Jonathan, I wish I was over there with you right now, sir, but tell us how things are going. Mike, you're really missing it. The fans are here, the familiar clash of pads out here on the field. You can really get the energy. High school football season is finally back here in the state of New Hampshire. The second game is being played right now behind me, Bishop Girton and the Memorials. The second of four games on tap here at Gill Stadium. I'll step off to the side so you can get a taste of some high school football action. Now today's, tonight's event is just a great opportunity for teams to get a final tune-up before the real games begin next week. A couple notes, Mike, from the earlier game. Salem High School school still very legit. They had a 30 to nothing W over Goffstown. Bishop Girton also proving that they're still legit. 28 nothing over Memorial. Two other games, Bedford versus Memorial and Pembroke and Central. So a lot of action going on right here. Bishop Girton, by the way, up 28 nothing over Trinity, but a lot to get to. A lot of changes with the playoff format. New coaches, top players, a lot to get to in tonight's show. Back to you in the studio, Mike. All right, Jonathan, great stuff. We'll see you soon. Let's start tonight by checking in with the four champions from last season, some of them moving to different divisions this year. And we start in Division I, where Londonderry won their second title in three years in 2021. They went 11-1 last season, beating the Winnicunit Warriors for the title. The Lancers have made the playoffs the past five years. They'll look to make it six straight, and they know everyone wants to beat the defending champs in 2022. You know, it can be good, it can be bad. Uh, I think we've learned some lessons before in the, from the past uh, when that happened, but we're really not trying to, to look behind us. We're not looking too far in front of us. We're really just trying to stay focused on today. There's definitely more pressure than last year. Uh, we definitely got the biggest target on our back this year, which I love embracing that. Um, instead of running away from the challenge, we want, we want the challenge. Um, we're just exci we're excited, we're ready to get after it. Uh, I feel uh, very lucky to play for London Ice program. We, I feel like we have one of the best coaching staffs in the state. They uh, put like a lot of their own life and time being here for us. In Division Two, the Timberlane Owls completed a perfect 12-0 season last year and captured their first championship in 20 years. But now the Owls turn their attention to Division I. They're moving up this season to take on the best competition in the state. They're returning eight starters on offense, six on defense. The leadership is there to win games in D1. We have a veteran group. Uh, we like our guys a lot. Uh, our guys are you know, less concerned about the, the schedule that we're playing as they are just showing up. You know, they, football started on August 12th, so they came out. Uh, they work hard for us every day, um, so we're, you know, we're excited to go. Very confident in our ability to win games. We have a lot of returning guys, and we're very experienced, and I'm excited. People are going to want to take down Division II champion Timberland, but I think the guys are just ready to take on that challenge and just work for, work for some wins. Also moving up divisions this year is the reigning Division III champs, the Pelham Pythons. They dominated in 2021. It was a perfect 10-0 season capped off by winning their second straight title. They scored an average of 49 points a game and allowed an average of just five points a game. But they have a new challenge this season, moving up to Division II. It's going to be a very difficult schedule, so we just have to take one, you know, one game at a time and play as hard as we can and have the chips fall where they may. I'm not really feeling any added pressure, but obviously we've got a big target on our backs. You know, people are trying to see if we're uh, good competitors because we're coming down from a championship. Uh, I'm feeling good so far. We, we've had good practices. We're doing good so far. We have a lot of returning starters, so I'm liking our, how we're looking right now. Obviously, we want to make the championship and win, but we're going to take it one game at a time this season, starting with West week one. And in Division 4, we say hello to the Summersworth Hilltoppers. They won the D4 championship last season, their first title in 24 years. 
But now the big question for this year, can the Hilltoppers repeat? Because they won, the coach says that's all the more reason to not get complacent. The challenge we have is with a little bit of success is not let that go to our heads, you know, and I think this, this team's done a good job of using that as a motivation to have them work even harder uh, and show that it's not a fluke. They still have something to prove. You know, we know every team has a circled, so it's, it's definitely kind of, uh, you know, the only thing harder than doing it once is going back to back, uh, but, you know, that doesn't deter us at all. Um, you know, we, we love the challenge. We embrace it. The pressure's cool. You know, I, I feel some of the pressure, but, you know, I feel like that, that's what makes me better, you know. Um, I just, you know, I'd love to have all that pressure on us and us to overcome it. I 100% feel like we're going to overcome that pressure. All right, let's talk about the changes for this season, starting with the new names taking over the sidelines for 2022. In Division I, Nashua North will be led by Chad Zibilis. A couple new coaches in Division II start with Scott Stearns at Kennett and Herb Hatch at Lebanon. Division three is where we see a lot of turnover. Ten teams and five of them are going to have a new coach. Josh Duford takes over at Stevens for Paul Silva, who is still around the program. Silva will step back into his old defensive coordinator position. Ron, Ron Ross is the new head coach for Epping Newmarket. That program is new to D3. Also new to D3 is Kingswood. This program will be led by Tom McCullough. At Conval, you got Matthew Harris and David Yazzie at Kearsarge. We were chatting with Stevens defensive coordinator Paul Silva, who says he's been in the division for a long time and there are some very good teams and coaches that will have them prepared each week. So it'll be a lot of fun seeing how that division plays out. And finally, in Division 4, new leadership at Bishop Brady, Brendan Johnson is replacing Tony Johnson, who retired after last season. No relation between the two. With the addition of Timberlane, there are now 21 teams in Division I. Some changes were made to the playoff structure this offseason, adding a fourth week to the playoffs and more chances for teams to get in. This was how the Division I championship ended last season. Londonderry taking the title over Winnicunit. This year, more teams will be in the playoffs vying for the crown. In the past, eight made the playoffs, but this year, it'll be 13, and some will get a bye. Some teams will only play eight games, so we figured by increasing our playoff structure to 13 teams rather than only eight, that's going to allow the eight teams that don't make playoffs to match up with each other on that first weekend of playoffs to get in a ninth game. Nashua Athletics Director Lisa Jingris says there will be three conference champions, each of them getting that first round by. Seeds four through 13 will play a preliminary round and advance from there. The other big change, the championship will be played on the Saturday right after Thanksgiving, Saturday, November 26th. This only applies to Division I. Previously, sometimes with only eight teams in, some teams felt that after the first couple of weeks or after the first couple of losses that they were out of the playoffs. So by opening up the field, 13 teams are going to get in. It makes the, the games towards the middle to the end of the season a little bit more meaningful that there's still a shot to make that playoff. So big changes there to how the playoffs are going to look. And for some perspective on that, let's go back out live now to Jonathan Marshall. He is standing by with one of the coaches in D1. Jonathan? Yeah, Mike, live with Coach Steve Abraham, head coach of the Salem Blue Devils. And Coach, first off, i got to ask you about that game against Golfstown. you got to be impressed, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy with the kids. Uh, they, they come out and they competed today. So uh, what we asked them to do was just be, be aggressive and physical. I mean, that's football. The, the, the mistakes we made is expected, and um, we're really young. So we, we have like six sophomores starting right now. So that's stuff we can fix. But I'm very happy with their compete and their effort. You talked about you guys are very young. What are some, some names that we can watch out for, some guys that you expect to, to lead the way on the field? Uh, Danny Hughes, middle linebacker, sophomore. Kevin Tedisco, uh, Justice Casado on offense. He scored tonight. Uh, David Jake's right behind me over here. He's our, our lead back. Um, our, our quarterback, Nolan Lumley, is a junior. Uh, I'm pretty happy with our guys up front, Luke Mazeka, Josh Mangin, Trevor Derice. They're, uh, they're pretty stout. You guys made the state semis last year. What can you guys take from that experience? Uh, well, it will be nice to get by the state semi for the first time. We've been there five straight years. Um, so I, I think what it does is it makes us hungry. It also gives the kids buy-in to our program. I mean, I, I, I'm not easy, right? So I, I work them pretty hard, uh, but I, I get the best job in high school football in my mind. So those kids are great, do a lot of work for us. We just ran a, a story about the playoff format and how much it's changed. What are your thoughts? What changed? What are the biggest changes you expect this season? Yeah, I mean, the you get – 
you get listen, you get an extra week of football this year, so that's number one. Um, I like the idea that for us, we still get to play Pinkerton and Londonderry, but the idea, like anybody can be a champion. Like we could play Londonderry someday, maybe in the championship or Pinkerton. You mean those rivalries can happen where they couldn't before. Um, so I think it's great. Uh, and maybe they'll move the championship to Thanksgiving instead of the Saturday after Thanksgiving. That's my hope. How's your schedule looking? How are things playing out in as far as the, your division in particular? Um, we have a tough schedule. I mean, we open up here with Central, and we go right into Bedford, Exeter. You know, again, we always play Pinkerton, Londonderry, Wyndham. Uh, we're playing Wachusett from Massachusetts, so it, it gets harder every week. It gets harder every week, but our guys are going to compete. How do you guys get yourselves ready from, from tonight? What do you take from tonight to get ready for next week, week one? Uh, well, number one, I told them it's only a half, so we got to get in better shape. Uh, but, no, uh, you know what? They want to get better, so um, we just got to get better at our basic football technique, block better, tackle better, and, uh, and go and have fun, too. That's the most important part. All right, Steve Abraham, coach of the Salem Blue Devils, thanks a lot. Thank Good you. luck this season. Thank you. All right, Mike, back to you in the studio. All right, Jonathan, thank you very much, and our thanks to Coach Abraham as well. Coming up, we'll tell you about some of the players to watch and show you how they've been getting ready for the season. Plus the kickoff to New Hampshire Tackles Hunger Campaign. How high school teams will help pantries in their communities this season. And the Patriots are also hitting the field tonight for their final preseason game live right here on WMUR. We'll have a preview coming up.